I'm going to take you through all the settings on the Wings compressor and show you how to use them on vocals. To speed things up, download my free compression cheat sheet using the link in the description. It'll give you recommended compression settings for vocals and instruments. When it comes to vocals, they can really belt it out or sing softly, and compression allows you to bring the two closer together so your vocal isn't jumping in and out of the mix. The ratio setting on a compressor decides how aggressive the compressor will respond. A higher setting like 12 to 1 will compress much more aggressively than a lower setting like 3 to 1. Well, what does this actually mean? Well, with a ratio of 3 to 1, for every 3 dB the signal crosses over the threshold, you will only hear 1 dB of increased volume instead of 3 dB. Using the same example, if the signal crossed over the threshold by 6 dB, only a 2 dB difference would be heard. Now, I could have just given you a recommended setting for vocals, but it's important that you know what the ratio does. That said, good ratio for vocals is 3 to 1. If you want my recommended settings for the other instruments, be sure to download my free compression cheat sheet using the link in the description. Next up is the knee. The knee setting on a compressor gives you the opportunity to make compression more transparent. It softens the way that compression is applied after it crosses the threshold. A knee of zero would be considered a hard knee. It's gonna wait until that signal hits the threshold and then throw compression on as soon as it does. A knee of five would be considered a soft knee. It applies a bit of tolerance so that the compressor eases in as it approaches the threshold. And for vocals, a knee of three is a great starting point. Attack, release, and hold. The attack setting on a compressor decides how much time it takes for the compressor to compress at full force. So an attack of five milliseconds will cause the compressor to fully activate much more quickly than say 100 milliseconds. For vocals, you generally want the attack time between five and 20 milliseconds. Otherwise, the S and T syllables will sound too harsh. The release setting on a compressor is how fast the compressor lets go once the signal crosses back under the threshold. For a vocal, if the release is too fast, it'll bounce back erratically and sound unnatural. If it's too slow, the vocal will sound over compressed. 50 milliseconds is a great starting point for vocals, but don't be afraid to adjust to solve either of the two issues I just mentioned. The hold setting on a compressor determines how long the compressor should stay active after the signal goes back under the threshold before releasing it according to your release time. For vocals, set this around 0 to 20 milliseconds as you really don't want the compression to hold for any lengthy amount of time. On the wing, you also have the option to let the mixer decide these settings for you called auto envelope. In my experience, this is one of the cases where auto works great. So if you don't want to mess with attack, hold and release, simply activate auto envelope and carry on with your bad self. The threshold decides how loud the signal has to be in order to activate the compressor. For example, if the threshold is set to negative 10 dB, it'll compress anything louder than that and leave everything quieter untouched. The threshold setting is going to be different for each vocal, but it's easy to figure out. Simply adjust it until the gain reduction meter is averaging negative 5 dB during normal singing. It'll probably hit a bit over negative 10 dB when they get excited and really belted out, but you really don't want to compress more than this or the vocal will start to sound lifeless. And in case you were wondering, the gain reduction meter is showing you how much the signal is being compressed. Are you looking for the quickest way to master everything on the Behringer Wing? Check out my course, Wing Mastery, using the link in the description. Makeup gain. The gain setting on a compressor is different than the main channel gain. It's actually considered makeup gain. Since you're lowering the volume of the signal with compression, you can make it up using makeup gain. For vocals, you'll set this between 3 and 6 dB since that's the average amount we are aiming to reduce the signal. This brings the signal back to where you started but with a smaller dynamic range. In other words, now the quieter moments are louder and the louder moments are quieter. Peak versus RMS. The wing gives you the option to compress based on peak or RMS. To understand these two terms, you'll need to nerd out a bit. But for now, I'm just going to keep it simple. Peak compression should be used when you want it to be a noticeable effect. RMS compression should be used when you want a smoother and less noticeable compression. Now when it comes to vocals, RMS is the way to go. Crossover mode. The wings compressor gives you the ability to compress certain frequencies more than others using the crossover mode setting. For example, if you set it to 6 dB low, compression will be more heavily applied to low frequencies. Leave this set to flat for simplicity's sake, or if you feel like an adventurer, try setting the depth to 3 dB and frequency to 10 kilohertz. This will add some sparkle to the vocal. Lastly is the key filter, which allows you to decide if only certain frequency ranges should trigger the compressor to activate. 
For example, if you set the key filter to low pass, the compressor will only be triggered by the lower frequencies instead of the full frequency spectrum. You also have the option of changing the key source, and this allows you to trigger the compressor based on another channel if you want. But when it comes to vocals, you'll want to set this to self. Now, the best way to get a grasp on all of these settings is to watch and listen as someone sets compression on a vocal. I'm going to do that now for my Inner Circle subscribers. If you're not a subscriber yet, use the link in the description to subscribe to my Inner Circle, and you'll get immediate access to the extended version of this video, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching calls and my private group chat. Use the link in the description, subscribe to Inner Circle. And hey, a special thanks to Sweetwater for sending us the wing so that we can create these videos. I've included a link below where you can shop the best deals at Sweetwater and support our channel in the process.